Previously, we looked at how to save and load data using user defaults, which is great for small amounts of data or even small amounts of JSON if you need to. We've also looked at Swift data, which is great when you want to have relationships between objects or more advanced sorting and filtering. In this app, we're going to look at a middle ground, just storing our data in a file directly. This is not because I somehow hate Swift data. And in fact, I think here, Swift data would be a very good choice indeed. Instead, my goal here is simply to show you the full spread of what's possible in iOS development. And you'll see lots of apps out there that work exactly like this app will do, writing data to and from files. It's good to at least see how that approach works. That being said, User default is definitely the wrong choice here, okay? In our app here, we're gonna let users create data over time, so there's no limit to how much data they can add to the app. And user default is not good for that. Simple settings and similar. Swift data maybe, but not user defaults here. Fortunately, iOS makes it easy to read and write data from device storage, and in fact, all apps get a directory for storing any kind of documents we want to have. Files, in this place, are documents directory, are automatically synchronized with iCloud. So if the user gets a new device through, then our data will be restored along with other system data. We haven't got to even think about it. There is a small catch though, and there always is, right? It's that iOS apps are sandboxed. They run in their own little container, which is in a hard to guess directory name, so you can't poke around and find other things easily. They're all carefully locked down. So as a result, we can't, and we shouldn't try to guess the directory our app is installed. Instead, we're gonna rely on a special URL called url.documents directory. For example, like here if I had uh, func test, I had something like this, uh, print url.documents directory. This directory here is ours to do with as we please, and because it belongs to our app, it'll automatically be deleted if the app is deleted. Other than basic device limitations, like how much storage the user has, there is no limit to how much data we can store inside here. But do remember, users can go to the settings app and see exactly how much storage your app is using. So try and be careful, be respectful. So that's our directory we can work with. Once we have that, we can read and write files in there previously. We've seen string contents of, and data content of for reading and writing data, uh, for reading data, sorry. But for writing data, we need a different method called write to. This takes two parameters. Firstly, a URL to write to, and then any additional options to use when we're doing our saving. The first of that, the place to write to, is combining our documents directory path here with some kind of file name. For example, myfile.txt. As for the second, I prefer to give, give this thing two values as an array. One is atomic and one is complete file protection. They do very different things, but both are important. Atomic means we are asking the file to be written inside one lump. Now, this is not included, and we try and write a big file out, okay? It's possible another part of our app might come in and try and read the file while it's still being written. Perhaps only half the files there at this point, and it reads now halfway through the right operation. This won't or shouldn't cause a crash or whatever, but it does mean it'll only read part of the data because the other part hasn't finished being written yet. Atomic writing tells the system, please write the full file out to a temporary file somewhere else. So it fully exists on disk. And when that's done, rename to the correct location. So it's basically an instant write operation to avoid that middle writing problem. Asking for complete file protection means iOS automatically and transparency encrypts our file and means the app can only read it while the device is unlocked. Now iOS does a great job of keeping user data secure by default, but there's no harm being extra safe. Okay, let's put this into action. We're gonna modify uh, this default sort of VStack thing going here. So it writes a test string to a file and reads it back into a new string and prints it out. So we can see the complete cycle of reading and writing data. So let's get rid of this testing here and instead say in our body, 
we have a button saying uh, read and write, like that. And the first thing we do is have some data to write. So I'll say our data is the data of the string test message dot UTF-8. So that means get the string encoding, UTF-8 encoding of test message and convert it to pure data. We can now decide where to save it. Our URL will be url.documents directory appending the path of message.txt. That becomes the exact place we want to write that data to. And now start a do block, this might throw errors. We'll try calling our data write to that URL. And for options, I'm gonna ask for atomic and complete file protection. Stash those both things, uh, things away safely. And then let's catch an error first, what's happy. Print uh, error.localized description, that's fine. Uh, once it's written out, I'm gonna get our input back again by calling try string contents of that same URL. Read it back into a string and then print the resulting input like that. So I'll press command R now, give it a quick try. We should see our little uh, button, hopefully on the screen in a second, and pressing it should print test message out down in our console down here. Boom. So that's reading and now writing safely as well. Before we move on, there's one small challenge I wanna give you. Back in project eight, we looked at how to make a generic extension on uh, the built-in bundle type that lets us find, load, and decode any kind of codable data from our app bundle. Can you write something similar for the documents directory, perhaps making an extension on file manager?